Hello and welcome to another Minecraft map making techniques video and today we're going to be looking at how to organize events within your Minecraft maps. Now I'm not just talking about like one or two events I'm talking about basically most of your adventure map. Now what I mean by this is when you go through an adventure map when the player is playing it they're going to encounter various quests various objectives that they need to complete in order to continue. I mean, that's fairly standard. Every single sort of adventure map that you want to make will have this sort of thing. Now, when you get a large amount of events and a large amount of quests that you want to be completed in various orders all throughout your map, you could just sort of create areas where you trigger redstone that you could run massive lines of redstone all across your map to places where it needs to be and sort of bring it all together in a whole bunch of complicated mess or you could do this now as you can see it does look a little complicated but it is very organized and the difference between doing something like this and spooling wires all across your map like as you can see there's a couple wires spooling across the map over there but that's just well, that's not really anything compared to how much you would have if you were trying to organize all of the events within the actual map itself. So, the way we're actually doing this is we've got all the events lined up here that we want to happen. So, basically, the way that it's going to interact with the environment, the way that players will interact with the environment, is via custom spawners. As you can see, there's one over there. And the idea is, if I come over to this spawner, this spawner has a delay on it until it will start spawning. But basically what it's doing is it's spawning a villager down on this pressure plate. And that's causing this line of redstone to be activated, which then gives out a sequence of commands, basically telling the player what's going on. So this part here, these sort of lines of redstone here with all the command blocks the main bulk of it this really is just the sort of aesthetics if you will all it's really for is telling the player what's going on maybe every once in a while doing a give command um, but the main sort of logical part of it comes in this part over here now, the way we're organizing when people advance is by using a quest objective. Now, the objectives are part of the scoreboard feature, which was introduced in the in one of the latest snapshots. So if you're still playing on 1.4.7, then I highly advise the upgrade because 1.5 has many awesome map making features and it is well worth the move up. If you don't exactly know how scoreboards work, then I have a series, The Ultimate Guide to Command Blocks, where I go through a whole bunch of things to do with this, so I'm not going to go into much detail about that. But basically, we have our quest objective. And when, you're, when you complete quests, the idea is that you're given points on the quest objective, and then we can test to see how many quest points you have, per se, to see whereabouts in the events sequence which is basically all of the events that the player is so let's have a look at this in action now now the next command block that the player would encounter in my adventure map or not command block spawner would be this one right over here so let's walk over to it and as you can see there's a villager spawning on that pressure plate down there now the villager actually has no health whatsoever so as soon as he spawns on the push plate, he dies. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that again, because I'm going to be doing a Ultimate Guide to Spawners series as well, teaching you more about how to do things like that. But as you can see, this line of redstone then got activated and outputted a whole bunch of text. Now the Q1, which is this line here, it says set score of Q1 for player player to one. Now player is my username because I'm playing offline at the moment. When you're playing offline, you don't actually have your registered username. You just have the word the name player. 
So don't be too confused about that. But the idea is that this command block over here is adding one to the Q1 objective. Now Q1 just stands for Quest 1 because this particular region um, is governing the first sort of chapter, if you will, of my adventure map. And basically the Q1 objective is the Quest objective, which I was on about earlier. So the idea is, at the moment, now we have a score Q1, a score of 1 for Q1. Now, what this means that we can do is, within the actual map itself, if we just sort of wander into the actual map, um, here we have a door. Um, if I could just squeeze through, there we go. This is a door. And this is a button. The <laughs> We're going back to basics, it sounds like. But um, no. The idea is that this button, the buton, goes into this command block. Now, this command block tests for a player with the minimum Q1 score of 1. So you can't open this door until you've finished talking to this guard. Because the guard, at the end of talking to him, gives you the score 1 for Q1. So if I go ahead and click this, the statement is true. So we can then use the power to output into the door. It's a bit of a jerky movement. I'm just going to perhaps switch this down a bit. There we go. All right, as you can see, we're getting our villager. But we're using an SR latch here, a set reset latch to make sure that the commands aren't pressed multiple times when you're walking throughout the map even if there are m more villagers spawning there anyway that's the general idea of that but there's more we can do with this system we can basically use these and gates to stop things happening for example the idea is that once you've completed these two events it comes down to this AND gate which comes to these part. Now if you notice every output into these lines is actually ANDed together AND gated together with these torches below. So if we just switch this off so if this input is false as it would be if this AND gate wasn't activated then if you step on this pressure plate nothing would happen because the second input to this AND gate is false and an AND gate of course needs both inputs to be true in order to work however as you see as soon as the AND gate input the secondary AND gate input is true it will register and work again now that is because the SR latch stored the information of us standing on it for a while after we had stood on it. Fairly straightforward. And of course, this AND gate, well, this SR latch. Now, okay, so let me get my bearings together. What I'm trying to say here is that that may appear to create a problem where if you were to walk into a region and a villager was to spawn on a pressure plate, before you had completed the previous objectives, surely that would set the latch to constantly outputting. And you'd get the problem like we had a couple seconds ago, where even though there was nothing standing on it, so there was nobody in the particular region, it still outputted once it was given a chance to update. Now, the way we solve this problem is we prevent the latches from changing state before they're allowed to. For example, I've used these orange wool that you may have noticed to sort of separate each little sub area within this sequence of events. So all the events or the events before this orange have to happen in order to allow the events here to happen and then after the events there have happened, the events after this orange part can happen. So, we haven't completed the events at this area yet. Hence, the events here 
will not happen. For example, Maya 2 is an event that happens in the game. However, for event for this event to happen, we need these events to have happened first. So the way that this is basically working is as you can see, the SR latch is not getting set. This line here is not permanently turning on, independent to whether or not we're standing on that. And no output is being put into the like line of sort of outputting, I suppose, because of this AND gate. Now, let's this kind of leads me on to this section below here which is the part which actually detects whether the quests have been completed. Because all this does is it checks if a person has entered a region. So, for example, this quest here is to try and find a guard's keys. That's why the quest is labelled guard keys. Now, a player walks into the region where the guard is, and the guard basically says, let's, let's step on this, the guard says, hello there, would you be so kind as to find my keys? I just can't seem to find them. Now, this event has happened. That's it, done. However, that does not mean that the quest has been completed. And we don't want the next set of quests or the next set of events to happen before this quest has been completed. Now, in my event lab, I want three quests.